I was apathetic. Keep the Raider, retire the Raider, Raider Trader, I didn't care. But then I started to question. Why? Why haven't many black athletes made it out of bug? Why aren't black athletes seen as teammates rather than assets? Why are those with less talent getting more recognition? Where is it okay for black people to park? Beside Redneck Row? Oh, maybe we should call it Colored Row. Where is it okay for black people to be located? On the field? In the end zone? Is that the only place where we fit in? Who? Who are we as a community to boo and belittle people who have a difference of opinion than ours? Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am as a Black Lives Matter activist not standing up for another oppressed group of people? Because silence is just as dangerous. How? How many books does a student have to read before they get to Maya Angelou, W.E.B. Du Bois, Octavia E. Butler, because I too am America? Langston Hughes. What? What has South Point done for my people, for my culture? What about blackness makes you uncomfortable? When? When will enough be enough? Because because making a small change of something you may love but offend somebody else is worth it. They are worth it. We are worth it. I am worth it. I'm not here to make a division. I'm here to stop it. Those memorable Friday night lights weren't always so bright for every student. And when did those students begin to see the light dim? I sat down with Elise Sadler, one of South Point's MVP athletes, to hear about her experience as a Raider. All right, so Elise, tell me a little bit about your South Point experience as a minority. My South Point experience as a minority, um, I can't really say that I had, I had a bad experience. I actually had a pretty good high school, um, high school experience for the most part. I did. Um, the people there they really took care of me um being an athlete you know my mom was a single parent of four kids mm -hmm. and you know she she had a lot on her plate mm -hmm. and a lot of the activities that i participated in if it wasn't for the help of teachers um parents of other athletes that i was a part of um, i wouldn't wouldn't have gotten the opportunities that i did right. um, they saw me they saw a need um, they saw me as a a stellar athlete and they they stepped in, mm -hmm. you know, and did their part. So I appreciated that for the most part when it came to that experience. I will say, though, that hindsight, looking back, um, I, which is one of my favorite words now throughout this <laughs> race culture is concerned, assimilation. Mm -hmm. um, I can't really say that I was proud of my black heritage because I assimilated into what the majority of South Point High School rep represented, which was um, white. Right. You know, um, I can't say that I was proud of my blackness because it wasn't a thing to be proud of to be black. Right. Um, or what was black? What what right? What was yeah. black? What was black? What was um, what 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 did that pride and culture and heritage look like? Mm -hmm. You know, um, did I experience some racism there? Absolutely, but it was so downplayed yeah. that I can't say that it impacted my life to a point where I was just like taken aback or mm -hmm. astonished by it because it was a norm mm -hmm. you know it was it, beca it became a norm it became a situation where stereotypes racism insults things that hurt my feelings as soon as it was said to me kind of was a relief almost as soon as it was said to me because it's like oh they're just playing mm -hmm. you know let's just laugh this off yeah. it's not to be taken serious yeah and the more I realized that I wasn't being taken serious myself is the more I realized I didn't take myself serious. Right. Well, let's talk about who were you? Let's see. It was two, 1999? 1999. Ooh, come 1999. on. 1999. <laughs> so, um, 1999, 2003, who was Elise Sadler? Uh, throughout, throughout my high school experience, I went from being the girl who 
love to play sports. Mm -hmm. I had an outlet in playing sports because for me that was my way of releasing any kind of negative feelings that I felt um, from my home life. Mm -hmm. You know, like being the oldest of four and feeling like I was responsible for so much. Uh, an outlet for me was sports. Mm -hmm. So, 1999, I got to Southport. I'm like, I'm going to dominate in every sport possible. Yep. Because I wanted that recognition for myself that I could achieve, that mm -hmm. I could do. Um, I grew up with everybody that I went to high school with. I grew up with going from grade school, kindergarten, I grew up all the way through mm -hmm. with. So these people were considered brothers, mm -hmm. sisters, family, you know, and it wasn't until I really got to high school to where I really met the great divide. And oh, wow. yeah, and that divide looked like it's not just about the who I am as a person. This is not about us playing in the playground with one another. It's about the color of my skin. It's about how much money I have. It's about my, my societal status, um, my knowledge education wise. Am I smart? Am I not smart? How am I going to be grouped? Mm -hmm. And that was a big reality for me because I realized, dang, I'm not just Elise who plays sports anymore. Like I'm another Elise. Mm -hmm. Like how am I going to fit in? How does that look like? Mm -hmm. What 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 am I going to look like to try to fit in? Mm -hmm. That's what high school is all about. Yeah. Trying to fit in. Um, but when you don't look like the majority, how do you fit in? Mm -hmm. I like that you said that. Like, yeah. I was writing, trying to figure out how to start this segment of the documentary. And I believe I ended it with, um, are we celebrated as students or as assets? Mm. So do you feel like being an athlete at South Point is being an asset to them to make them look better or to make you look better? We're definitely celebrated as an asset. Mm -hmm. Um being the minority, and I did a study uh, recently um, because I'm involved with the, uh, the the removal of the mascot. I'm on that leadership board, and one of the things that I did was a study that showed the ethnicity diversity there um, at South Point High School. And in 2018, 2019, I think, I think they had 1,001 students there. 79% mm -hmm. consisted of white, 8% mm -hmm. black. Everybody else is one, less than 1%. Mm -hmm. And when you look at that, it's like, oh, my God, like, who am I mm -hmm. to that particular organization, to that school? Who am I really if I'm only 8%? Do mm -hmm. I really matter? Mm -hmm. If I'm not assimilating, are they really taking into account who I am? Mm -hmm. If I'm not assimilating, are they really taking my hurts, pains, thoughts, ideas, you know, into real consideration mm -hmm. to say, oh, she matters? Mm -hmm. Or... Are we going to continue to do like we are and ignore those things just like we are with the Raider mascot mm -hmm. and say, you know what, regardless of the fact that this may mock your beliefs, mm -hmm. your spiritual, you know, beliefs, your, your, it may, it may stereotype your culture, mm -hmm. regardless of that, it's a tradition of ours. Right. You know, so regardless of how you feel about it, because we're the majority we're still going to continue to go through with this because this is our feelings mm -hmm. and we're negating yours. Right. And I think that's when you're only looked at as an asset, you can only really be looked at as an asset when you see that somebody, somebody only cares about what you can do for them because once you start, once you start saying, this is hurting me, mm -hmm. this is hurting me, you would think that the same people who looked at you and said, I'm here to help you would be the same people to say, I'm look, looking to say, I'm here to help you again, mm -hmm. but they're not. Red Raider football players were like celebrities in this small town. And winning wasn't something abnormal to us. We were known for breeding champions. But what happens after the glory years? After you stop helping them sell tickets or rewarding them with trophies? Jalen Porter. Jalen Ocho Porter. Number eight star. Nah, not star. <laughs> not a star. Not a star. Captain, not a star. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> So yeah. what year did you graduate from South Point? I uh, graduated in 2012. I mean, best class ever. We lost in the first round, but I'm not even trying to hear that. Okay. <laughs> not okay. even trying to hear that. You, but you the best class, which I lost? We we are the best class. Yeah. <laughs> Still 21. Okay. Still okay. 21. So let's talk about who was Jalen Porter in 2012 and before. Like, came Coming to high school and leaving. Who was that person? Who was Jalen Porter? 
2012. I was lost. <laughs> yeah. I was lost. I didn't find myself until after I had two kids. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what do you mean by lost? I was trying to make everybody happy. <laughs> trying to make my parents happy. My coaches happy. Uh, <laughs> my girlfriends happy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, everybody, anybody around me happy. It did me well. <laughs> like yeah. it did me well. I can't. It's it's hard to talk bad about something that you love so much. Right. So, it's it's hard to sit here and tell you that I felt different. I. It's just hard to sit here and just speak bad about it because it didn't feel bad. Mm -hmm. It it didn't feel bad until you start to see how, people's true colors. Till I had kids, uh, I've I've been around and. Uh, my kids are around the community. Uh, a lot of people don't know. I hear what they say, and um, I I judge them off of how they move around my kid, and what my kid hears, and how what he sees. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been a couple instances where um, you know my kids not encouraged to be around culture mm -hmm. like ours. It's, I mean, by people in charge at South Point. Mm -hmm. I like uh, it's been a couple instances at South Point where I've been wronged on the field but overlooked it because we win mm -hmm. uh, it's been a lot of times where I've had people say things to me that I just have to internalize and smile about like what? So, like from where Being we come. there, coming from where we come come from, I mean, I've seen it, so it's it's a little more possible for me. Mm -hmm. But from everybody else around who has never been anywhere, but from Mount Holly to Gastonia, Charlotte, Concord, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Like that 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 place is looked at as a holy grail, and it's so much emotion tied into it. It's so much pain, so much happiness, so much. I mean, so much tradition there that it's hard to let go <laughs> yeah it's hard to let go <laughs> and I, I'll go back to that but there were so many black kids who were excellent athletes I won't say better excellent that we can say better <laughs> I, I mean let's be field. honest we can we can say better. I was on Let's the field. Let's be honest. We can say better. I was on the field. I mean, there's some things that I've seen Tanner do that I've never seen in my life. Mm -hmm. Like I, I arrived for that man. Yeah. But there's also some things that I've seen Troy do. Yeah. Like on a practice field, I'm talking working as hard as he like what y'all see in games. Like I'm talking. There's two people, uh, two elite athletes. Bird, your big two, your uh, uh, big twenty two player of the year. Yeah. Um, Georgia Tech is supposed to be commit and went to the Citadel. Uh, I mean, he's me and me and Bird are going straight for Troy. Troy makes both of us collide into each other. How do you do that? Mm -hmm. How do you just get missing like that? There's no way you can explain something like that. Six, a sixth sense. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I don't know how you don't excel. I don't know how there's no tape. How there's no coaches coming knocking on the door. I mean, <laughs> other than a special treatment, how else do you look at it? Well, I can remember um, one where you said there will never be another homecoming queen. Yeah. So you did win homecoming queen in year 2003. 2000, was it two? I think it was 2002. 2002? Yeah, 2002. Okay. Um, I won homecoming queen. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a total experience by itself. Let me tell you. Number one, I didn't put myself on the boat, the the, the ballot to be voted for mm -hmm. because I was an athlete. Like, I was a tomboy, too. I was not mm -hmm. considered a pretty girl. Mm -hmm. um, I did not date anybody from mm -hmm. my high school because I grew up with everybody. Mm -hmm. The guys put, nominate the homecoming court. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, when, I, when I'm put on the ballot, I'm like, me? Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you, this is, this is what, what, what kind of got me. Yeah, you're the only black girl that we would consider put it, putting on the ballot because you play sports. You are a token. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I didn't really think t think anything of it then. I'm just like, I mean, okay, interesting, but I'm not going to win by any, by any means necessary. And so 
getting put on the ballot and hearing that, you know, like, oh man, like you're you're the most eligible black girl. It's like, wow. Like, that's what we're doing now? I mean, okay. Shrug, shoulder, move mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it's almost like you're pretty for a black girl. Yeah, you know, which is a, which is one of the other statements that I said because, and you get used to hearing stuff mm-hmm. like that and you just like, okay, cool. Like, almost becomes a compliment. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, we move forward with it. I, I'm telling you right now, I didn't change anything. Mm-hmm. My mom had to literally pull me by the hair to get me to put a suit on or a dress on mm-hmm. to try to assimilate to look like everybody because I just didn't fit in. Right. Th- there was nothing about me said homecoming queen <laughs> just mm-hmm. nothing from the way I looked to my dark skin mm-hmm. to my hair to the way I dressed um, and it was very discouraging to walk through the hall sometimes and to hear um, some of the comments from the students be like, you know, hey, she's don't worry about her. She's not going to make it because she's black. Mm-hmm. You know, we they've had their black homecoming queen already. You know, it's it's not going to ever happen again. Mm-hmm. And even here, some of the teachers, I remember one of the teachers in particular who was in charge of the homecoming committee, who was over, you know, some of, I'm, I'm going to say she's over everything, but she was in charge of the majority of it. Mm-hmm. She had the nastiest attitude towards me. Mm-hmm. Everybody was treated, everybody else was treated with such kindness and, you know, hopefulness and optimistic. But when it came to me, it just felt like I just got the run of the mill. Like, mm-hmm. ugh, you know, mm-hmm. almost, I, I guess at least, you know, mm-hmm. or we'll see, maybe. Mm-hmm. But the her energy and tone behind it was you just don't have, you don't have a chance. Mm-hmm. And when it came out that I was definitely up, because, you know, you got people talking. I was definitely up for actually winning this thing. Mm-hmm. That's when the rumors really hit. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, my God, there's all, there, there might be another black homecoming queen. Mm-hmm. Like, she doesn't deserve it. Mm-hmm. You know, she, this, is, this is unfair. I'm like, wait a minute. Why? Like, right. this, is, this is a vote here. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a school-wide thing. Everybody has an opportunity to cast a vote. To see who's going to be the next homecoming queen. Mm-hmm. And when they announced my name that night. Before then I had people telling me. At least you got it. You got it. You got it. And I'm like whatever. Like I, y- y'all just messing with me. You know mm-hmm. I'm just. I just got to put on. My mama just making me put on this. You, this, this darn suit for mm-hmm. no reason. But mm-hmm. I'm going to get out here and make it do what it do. And when they called my name. Um, honestly the only thing that. That went through me was. I told you so. <laughs> mm-hmm, <laughs> you know, like, oh, look at me. Like, mm-hmm. it, it was, I I won Homecoming Queen, and I didn't even feel proud for me. I felt proud for my culture. Mm-hmm. Like, I did. I was like, I'm black. I'm a female. I don't, I ain't do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> my clothes raggedy. Mm-hmm. But I made Homecoming Queen. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not the stereotype. I'm not the typical but just because you're not the typical doesn't mean that you can't excel mm-hmm. and doesn't mean you can't exceed. So I felt like me as homecoming queen, I set the precedent for any other woman, not just black, especially black. Mm-hmm. But I, I said I felt the precedent to say you don't have to be typical to be a queen. Mm-hmm. You can be your own. You can be who you are. And that right there was near and dear to my heart, which for me, I wanted to look at South Point and be like, I would stick up my middle fingers right now because I really want to, but I'm just going to behave. Right? <laughs> but I really wanted to look at South Point and just be like, you know what? This is the new South Point. Mm-hmm. I am the new South Point. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it made people stand up regardless of whatever happened in, in the year of 2002. One thing that I made happen as a student is that I made them pay attention to, to the non-typical students. Mm-hmm. We hear and we matter. I wore a t-shirt on the, to football practice. I wore a Obama t-shirt, Obama Biden t-shirt. It was a black, all black with his face. And it says, uh, what was his slogan? Yes, we uh, can. Was that it? Yes, we can. Was it change? Oh, change. Yeah. It was change. The first one was change, I mm-hmm. think. And I had a coach who I won't, I won't say. Because me and his son have a great relationship uh, re- as of recently. And he looked at me and said, change. Looking back on that, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Right. Well, what did he do to you to have so much anger? He told me to take off that shirt and never wear it again. I never wore that shirt again. 
I wanted to be accepted. That's how far I went. <laughs> That's how... I mean, I never wore that shirt again. I, I couldn't tell you where it went after that. <laughs> I probably threw it in a trash can. I don't even think I finished the day with that shirt. It's not... I mean, obviously it's not okay. Mm -hmm. But... It's accepted. To feel accepted. Like... If you, if you, like you said, mm -hmm. if you fit into this mold, we'll treat you better. Mm -hmm. Like you said, how you were like, I had, I had to learn how Have to be Have you ever black. felt, I know this is going to sound ridiculous and crazy, but I'm from Tallahassee. FAMU is mm -hmm. one of the biggest black colleges in America. Right. Um, Florida A&M, they have one of the best homecomings, one of the best bands, the Marching 100. It's always been a part of my life. But after moving here and being in North Carolina for so long and then going back home for a homecoming, I've never felt more uncomfortable around mm -hmm. my own people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at my own people like white people look at us. Mm -hmm. Like, what's going on over there? Like, judging people off of people I don't even know. That's like, ghetto. You know, yeah, like, why are you acting like that? Why are you being a shh? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like quiet down. Yeah, quiet down. You know, they're over there looking at. They're over there looking. At, I don't give a. <laughs> you know, right. you know how that goes. I mean, you're in, like you said, you're in culture shock, and that's sad. <laughs> it's sad. It's not okay to be us right. here. It's not. It's just not. Conforming is the act to behave according to socially acceptable conventions or standards that little black boy or girl sitting in a South Point classroom. Create standards that constantly require you to become the best you you can be. Being black is a blessing. Never be ashamed of your culture and never be afraid to fight for it. Because strength and determination is in your bloodline. And you are your ancestors who are the street. Rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. 